Welcome back to Enshrouded, everyone. Now that the Enshrouded playthrough is coming to an end, at least for now until the next big update, many of you know that I've been wanting to build a giant treehouse as part of a cozy forest fantasy village in Blackmire here, and I am really excited to get that project started today. So the plan for this video will be walking throughout this location that we chose in my last Twitch livestream for the Enshrouded Twitch Drops, where I did a stream scouting out the perfect location for this project. So I'll walk you through the location, share the plan, and then we'll begin hollowing out this giant tree here to create a way to get up the tree and out onto a branch in order to start working on the first big tree house of the village. So with that said, sit back, get cozy, and let's get started. So starting out with the location here, this is where we are on the map. If you're at the Blackmire Ancient Spire, you can just glide down in this direction, and it's this giant tree right down here, which I think is a beautiful location for this project. We have great views overlooking the forest, nice views of the sunset off in that direction, and I also just love the variation in the terrain here. We've got some nice big flat areas for building things, and then it all kind of just steps down, creating these nice little hills and cliff edges to dig little hobbit holes into, create windy pathways coming up, and then some nice flat areas at the top as well as at the bottom here to create gardens and farms. Not to mention the massive tree that will become a beautiful center of the forest village, and we'll be building a big tree house as well as other little tree huts, little bridges connecting them, little homes within the trunk of the tree itself, sort of creating a whole little village center within this big tree which I think will be perfect for that. I really love the way that tree looks. And then I was even thinking of building another tree, um, starting from scratch using the new bark and heartwood materials on this little hill right here, because why not have a couple of trees as part of this big village here? Uh, we could do a smaller one from scratch so you guys can see my process on building a tree, and then we can use this existing giant tree to sort of be the heart of the village and turn it into something really, really cool. Modify it a bit as we need to, add some branches, remove some branches, because building something of that size from scratch would definitely take a while. So with that, let's get started on hollowing out this giant tree here. And I'm gonna be showing you an exact method and step-by-step -step guide down to the exact block placement of what you have to do to hollow out this tree trunk so that you can follow along with this forest village project as of now. Of course, the map is always subject to changes, especially while the game is still in early access, but we're going to use this little Revelwood tree as our reference point to start this project here. And what I'm going to do in terms of structuring the content for this project is I'm going to make videos on each of the individual builds as well as the bigger planning stages like this video, as well as doing live streams to sort of fill in the gaps between those videos for those of you that have a bit more time and would like to come join in for those, sort of see some of the behind the scenes and planning and landscaping and perfecting everything. So that's kind of my content plan for this project. But with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and place a little flame altar right over here. It doesn't matter where you place it as long as it covers the area where this tree is in. Then what we're going to do is go to our single block. I'm just going to be using the rough stone block for this. You'll want a bunch of a block of whatever you want to have that block be. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and sort of create a little tiny L shape right around the trunk of this tree as we face this massive tree over here. Then I'm going to go ahead and dismantle this tree and extinguish this flame altar. Go ahead and craft another flame altar here and place it right so that the corner is on that little L shape, just like so. And we're probably gonna need to upgrade this altar at least to a level two. Um, yeah, let's try that. We may need to go to level three, but this is just temporary, but you should have this exact same altar placement if you're following along with this at the time of this video. And now we're going to start blocking ourselves a doorway into this tree, which I love this spot right here, right in between these two roots. And I'll kind of walk you through my process of how I came up with this spot and why we're making the door right here. So to start out, I'm going to take my little tiny ceiling piece. We're going to turn off snapping 
and place one right here. Uh, so this is kind of a half block. It's the two meter section. Then we're going to go in with our four meter, turn snapping back on, and go ahead and start blocking ourselves a doorway into the tree. That's two of these uh, four meter uh, foundation pieces tall. And we're going to be going into the tree by six and a half of these. So here's our little half. That's what we just placed down here. Then we've got one, we've got two, and let's see here, three, and then four, and then five, and then six. So just like so, now we are into the tree. And this is where we're going to start the big windy staircase that will go up the tree. And we're just going to block things in in this video and get all the structure and the planning done. The next bit of detail work will be done in another stream where we'll actually build the staircase itself and everything. But with that said, yeah, I think we can keep that flame altar at a level two. I'm going to start doing the staircase. So we'll go ahead and block in one more. So this is the seventh. And then we can go ahead and remove all of these. What I may actually do is just remove like every other one so that I can still get a sense of like um, how many blocks I am. And we're gonna start doing, so as you're facing this, if you come in from the tree, and what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and use a wisp light so y'all can see this better. As you're facing here, coming in from the tree, facing the opposite direction of that little opening, we're going to go ahead and place one of these foundations right to the right of this seventh block here. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and hollow out the very top section. So placing one, two, and then this will become sort of the stairway. So we're going to place one there. That one's going to stay. This is all going to get hollowed out. Oops, I wanted it to be right there. So here we go. This big square that we've just created right now is going to be the staircase. And now I could just go ahead and fully remove these. I really don't need them anymore. You guys get the gist of it. There we go. That way we can kind of walk in here a lot easier. And I think I am going to go ahead and just remove that piece as well. So now we're just going to go ahead and work our way up the tree trunk. Basically just placing one of these four meter foundation pieces and creating a big windy stairway. Um, more of just blocks here than an actual stairway. <laughs> big blocky sections that we'll go ahead and turn into staircase eventually. But it'll just be like that. We'll just continue winding around all the way around until I get to a certain height. And that height will be 27 of these blocks. Yes, I did do a bit of planning before this video and I'll walk you through that planning process. But this is being one of the blocks, so we'll do one, two, three, four, and there's five, all the way up till we get to 27 of them. All right, here we go. So I ended up having to upgrade the altar to a level three right here. Um, and then we go in, and this is the seventh block, seven and a half technically, uh, and in between this foundation block and that flame altar is six and a half of those foundation pieces. So I'll grab another wisp light and we go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and there is twenty-seven. So yes, it's a tall staircase. <laughs> and the next step now is to hollow out a little section so we can stand on top of that 27th block there. So something just like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually hollow it out by two of these foundation pieces tall. So we'll do something, something like that right there. And this 27th block, we're going to go ahead and bring another one right next to it that's even with it. And again, I'll share you the reasoning for these numbers and everything in a moment here. But now we're going to go ahead and cut ourselves a little opening right into the side of the tree. So let me go ahead and maybe do that. That way you can remove all of the pieces in here. And this, my friends, is the opening that we will do 
a treehouse in. So we'll sort of have this opening go out onto a custom branch that we are going to build that goes off in that direction for the treehouse to go on. And to start with that, I'm actually going to go ahead, turn snapping off. So you guys can sort of see how this works. Let's turn snapping back on now. I'm just going to place some of these little uh, foundation pieces going out here so that we can take a better look from below. So this is where we are right now. That level 3 flame altar at the bottom was perfect. You could also just place a bunch of level 1s as you work your way up the tree if you're uh, very short on, the, uh, on these guys, on the shroud cores. But I find it easier to just place one, upgrade it to three temporarily. That way I can sort of block this entire thing in, log out, log back in, and don't have to worry about the rest of my progress being lost. But yeah, this will be where we build our artificial tree limb. Not really artificial, but custom tree limb. <laughs> so if I glide down to the bottom here, and we take a step back, this is our progress so far. As you can see there, that is where the tree limb is going to go, which I thought was the perfect height to build a big treehouse on. I didn't want to go too high into those little branches up there. I kind of wanted to fill out the tree a little more because a lot of these trees have, uh, they're kind of sparse. They don't have a lot of big thick branches near the bottom. So I wanted to fill it out with a big one for our custom treehouse. And uh, the reason for 27 of those foundation pieces high is that's just where I felt it was right to build that little tree, uh, that tree branch there. And yeah, 27 is pretty high. You can get a sense of just how big this tree is. It is absolutely huge. And in a future live stream, we'll be turning these blocks here for the foundations into a staircase that will kind of wind up around. It might have little passages leading off of it because the bark for this tree is so thick and the trunk is so thick that uh, that'll just kind of make sense. But this way, we can kind of hop on up there and the flame altar, the final flame altar, will actually get placed on this tree limb right here. But what I want to do now is explain why I placed that initial flame altar where I did, and my reasoning for sort of planning out where these blocks would be placed. And to do that, I'm actually going to log into another world where I have cut away portions of the tree to make it easier to explain. Okay, so here I am in another world, and it's actually really useful to have two worlds when planning a project this big. It was very helpful for me to sort of rough in some things in this world and block things out and sort of come up with a plan before doing it for the final time in the second world. So you can see here that I've taken a giant crosscut out of the tree to help explain this to you. This is where our doorway is. So you can see there we've got the little L shape that was where the flame altar used to be. And we walk into here and there is our staircase here. And then I've taken a bunch of chunks out of each side here. You can see we're pretty close to the side of the cliff here where the tree is. Uh, we only have maybe two meters of wood actually exposed there on this side of the staircase. Whereas you can see over on this side we've got quite a lot here. And if I go ahead and expose farther on this side here, just to be able to see a bit more of the wood there up top, I think that'll probably do it. You can see we definitely have a lot more wood over on this side. But what I'm doing is I place this staircase. It's actually a very careful placement to be as centered as possible on the bottom and on the top. Because you can see from the outside, this tree trunk angles uh, at a pretty sharp angle here. We angle out over the cliff edge here. Uh, as you can see, kind of angling toward me. And then it also angles back toward where the sun sets. Um, which is actually kind of cool. I really like the interest and angle in the tree. You can see, especially from over here, how we can see it just tips really sharply away from us. Kind of leans there to the right. Um, and so I had to pick a really careful spot for this staircase to not sort of blow through the edge of the tree trunk um, as I built upward. So this is how we are on the bottom. We've got a ton of space over here, which we could do a whole house and a big room in. Um, not so much space over here. It's pretty close to the edge there, but we still have wood surrounding the entire stairway. And then as we work our way up the 27 little platforms here, 
You can see, yeah, we have wood around the entire thing. We're not hiding into the bark, and I had to do this many times before I kind of came up with what I thought was the best center um, that sort of averaged the two and had the door in a nice spot at the bottom. So here's our 27th block. You can see here we have the opening. This is the final flame altar placement, and I'll go over that in the next world. Uh, we'll kind of recreate this. But I've also taken out some chunks so you can see the wood exposure on all sides. So you can see here we're actually pretty centered at this final height. And this is what I was going for. I wanted wood surrounding the entire staircase, but I wanted it to be fairly centered at the very top here. And then as we went to the bottom, it was okay if it got a little offset just because that tree trunk was so fat and it was kind of leaning a lot. So that was sort of the plan. And I did this, like I said, many, many times until I got the perfect placement where I was happy with it. Sometimes I'd have bark showing through and the walls wouldn't be entirely wood. So I'd kind of move it around until I was happy with it. But I really like this spot. And I also really, really like where the door ends up right here. Uh, sort of being in between these two roots, which I think will just trim out really beautifully. And I like how it comes out onto this higher point of land where we could have a little path sort of coming up there. And maybe a little path that winds down and around the back side of the tree. So it ended up working out quite perfectly. And I really like where that artificial branch placement is going to end up on the tree. It's pretty centered on the trunk up there, which was what I was going for. So with that said, hopefully that helps explain some things. This is definitely the longest piece of the project. And assuming this little tree isn't here, or if you want to replicate this project on a different tree in Blackmire Forest, this planning will hopefully help you with that, of how to sort of find the average center of the tree to make a staircase in. So with that said, I'll log back onto the other world, and we can start recreating what I have there, that big platform to become the big treehouse. So here we are back in the main world, and this is what we've done so far. Just put a few of these little ceiling pieces... And you can see here that they sort of step up uh, just to get over this little entryway. We'll kind of fix that later. These are just temporary to find the location for the final placement of the flame altar, which we're going to do right now. What we want to do is turn snapping off, grab one of these big foundation pieces, and sort of sit it down by two blocks. So that's a little bit too far. I want something like that. There we go. All right. So there you can see that it's down two blocks lower than what this is. And that will allow us to essentially place this flame altar, which will be one block higher than that. So this flame altar, the top of this flame altar will be even with this 27th step right here. And then we can remove all of this stuff. But first, what I'm going to go ahead and do is fly all the way down here. And we can extinguish the first flame altar right here. Uh, because I have reached my maximum altar capacity in this world. <laughs> this is the playthrough world for those of you who uh, are wondering. So I've got a bunch of other altars placed and things. And as we finish up the playthrough, I still have one more Hollow Halls dungeon to do and everything. Uh, I may start removing some of those flame altars to sort of clear some space for more of these big builds that I want to start doing. So let's get back up to the top there. And we can go ahead and place this one right like that. There we go. So as you can see, now the top of the flame altar is one block lower. And pay attention to that little, like, crescent circle there on the side. Um, that will be the direction we face when we spawn in, which will be this direction. And I like that. That's perfect. So now we can go ahead and max this flame altar out all the way to level four. Uh, and this will be the final placement. If I go ahead and take my hammer out, you can see that the top of it doesn't even cover the top of this tree. That's just how massive this tree is. So we get most of it, though. We have most coverage in all the branches. If you want, you could place another flame altar on top of it somewhere in the branches up there if we wanted full coverage. But that should be plenty uh, to sort of build all the tree houses we want. And then you can see as we glide all the way down here, the boundary is huge. The maxed out flame altar is quite big. So here's the bottom of it, as you can see, which gives us plenty of room to work with all of this terrain and even dig underground a bit, create all of our hobbit holes and everything. So the placement of that flame altar is just perfect. That was another thing that took me a while to figure out was what makes sense, what looked good, and, uh, and also what would function well for this project. And I think that that just is perfect in all regards. I love the placement of where that branch is going to go. 
that altar placement is absolutely perfect. The boundary is perfect. You can see here again if I if I pull my hammer out and uh, we head up top here on this on this hill again, I'll just kind of walk the boundary of what will become the forest village. And it could be kind of cool in future updates if they allow you to upgrade a, a flame altar even farther. But you can see here, this is one of the edge boundaries. It encompasses this entire hill portion. We've got the line that goes up there and then just barely misses this other giant tree over here. So from a practicality and placement standpoint, this just worked out perfectly. And if I could somehow get up there, I think it'll be easier if I get up from sort of this direction. Yeah, here we go. And you can see here is the top boundary edge. So we've got this entire hill to work with. It's huge. This encompasses this whole thing. We've got the edge over here. And then we've got this whole big flat area on this side, which has the beautiful lighting and views of the sunset. And this is the other side of the flame altar boundary. So just a really, really amazing spot. Encompasses everything we want it to do. You can really see the lean in the tree there, how it really angles off, uh, which looks really cool. I like the gnarly twisted look of that tree. So with that said, now we've got an easy, quick elevator up the tree. We can just fast travel to that flame altar, uh, which will be in the main tree house. This will be the biggest tree house of the tree. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and destroy some of these. Turn snapping back on. And let's see here. Maybe with something like this. Yeah, we'll go ahead and sort of build off of this... Uh, this centerpiece here. I'll keep I'll keep these the way they are, just as sort of my reference point. But what we're gonna do is now begin sort of snapping out the foundation of the treehouse. A rough outline. This may be completely subject to change as we uh, do more planning, but this will work for now. So let's see here. Let's go ahead with that. I want to bring it all the way across here. All the way around back of the flame altar. Do something like that right there. That should work. And then this portion I want to come out by three blocks. Let's bring this out by a whole nother block. This is huge. We're going to be able to fit a massive treehouse in this area. I think that's like that's kind of a rough floor plan. Uh, we will we will change that around. Um, but it kind of kind of goes out a bit. And again, in between the flame altar uh, and that 27th stair, we have one, two, three, four of these uh, these blocks there. So I think that'll end up being perfect. Could even go out a whole nother section here, but that should work out. That should work out for what we want to do. And it's big. That'll be plenty big for a treehouse. We've got plenty of room to even do two levels here. And uh, I think that'll work out perfectly. If we fly down now, all the way to the bottom, which allows us to kind of see a better view of what we've got going, you could see we could even go bigger than that for that treehouse. Uh, it looks pretty small in uh, in relation to how massive that tree is, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. This will allow us to go go big with this forest village. So the next step is to start working on the branch that will go below this platform to sort of support it and hold it up and look really nice. So I'll have the branch sort of extending beyond the platform here. And to do that, we got to start building ourselves some scaffolding to get underneath this area. So I'm going to turn X off. For no snapping, we can use Q and the scroll wheel to uh, sort of bring our bring our pieces down a bunch a lot lower here. Let's see. If I zoom into my character, there we go, that'll make it a little easier. So we can sort of bring ourselves a little staircase down here to start working on that branch and sort of just a big platform for scaffolding. And that'll allow us to get all the terrain blocks and start blocking in a giant branch there that will come out and uh, and hold everything. We can go ahead and remove that. That's where the flame altar was placed. That should work out well. Awesome. All right. So yeah, in line with the flame altar there, that's what we'll start doing is blocking out a whole bunch of terrain. And hopefully this will kind of act as some scaffolding for us. 
to block in and rough in that entire branch. So now we just have to gather a whole bunch of terrain materials. We need a lot of the black mire bark in particular, which I think will be the main uh, material to do the branches out of. The heartwood, as I've noticed in a lot of these trees, is just in the center trunk, but they actually don't use heartwood on the branches, which makes sense. It'll be easier, I think, for us to just build the whole branch out of the bark. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So I've got my iron pickaxe, iron axe. We'll go ahead and grab a bunch of bark. Okay, here we go. I've gone ahead and collected a lot of bark, and I'll probably end up needing even more. This stuff gets eaten pretty fast, so I'm going to be using the biggest terrain blueprint that there is right now. Um, I think that'll end up working out best. You could use these little blocks, but I'll use these to sort of refine the design later. Uh, I'm going to be starting out with these big boxes, the 4 meter ones. And we'll go ahead and sort of put them in line with that flame altar there. I may even need to do another another round of uh, scaffolding here so we can kind of switch back to these pieces. And let me get, let me turn snapping off here. Go and put one right over here to make it a little easier to reach some of this. There we go. So I'll just sort of start blocking in a giant tree limb that's in line with that flame altar there. And getting these blueprints spaced as far apart as possible is key because we don't want to waste a bunch of resources. So I'll we'll just kind of put it like that, do another layer, and just keep coming down with these. And this branch will look very boxy right now, uh, which is completely okay. We'll end up uh, changing that all around later but just sort of place them good and far apart and building out the thickness of this branch here. You can see that one didn't quite tie into the rest of the tree, so I want to back it in a little more. There we go. Something like that. Perfect. And I can hop over to this scaffolding here and just keep using Q and the scroll wheel to sort of zoom in and out of these. Let's go and put one right there. Put another one... I think right here. Is that in line? I think that's in line. Or is it there? Yeah, I think that's good. And we'll just keep continuing out all the way. I can go ahead and try to... Again, we'll need some more scaffolding over here. Probably something up in here. That'll probably allow me to reach what I need. Put a little one over here. And this is all I'm doing for now. It's just going ahead and blocking out ourselves a big, big branch. So there's something like that. We can go over here and throw this guy out even farther. Go to this piece of scaffolding. And like I said, I wanted it to extend quite a ways beyond the edge of the foundation here, so see something like that. And even there for now. And I'll even do a secondary little branch coming off of it. We're going to make it look as natural as possible in the end. So this is all just roughing it out and getting a bunch of material laid down, which is the first step. And then we'll go ahead and sort of perfect it later on. Sometimes it's a little hard to sort of see where it's getting placed. There we go. It's more like it. And we'll just keep building it down. What I'll do is just keep doing that, tying it in, and sort of tapering it down into the tree. And it can always just be helpful to sort of step back, glide down, take a look at it from far away. But I think this will work. This will work for now to sort of get the rough shape of it. There we go, so now I have blocked in a rough outline of the side profile of what the branch is going to look like. So again, it's very rough right now, I'll be changing it around, but that's about the right size that I want it to be. It may come out a bit farther, but you can see that's pretty thick. And uh, if I go ahead and break this block here, we can take a look at how it looks from the bottom. And this is always just super helpful step down here and look at it from a bit farther away. You can see there the outline, which is looking pretty good. It's looking proportional to the tree there. 
especially as we start thickening it out a little more, rounding it off and everything. So I think we're getting close to being ready for some more of the detail work. And for that, I'm going to start again with the big blueprints for terrain and just start widening out the branch a bit. But this time, I'm just going to kind of free place them and sort of do what I think looks pretty good. We'll kind of start wide at the top and let's see here. Let me kind of step to the edge of this. And we may need to kind of, again, these, these little pieces as scaffolding are just so helpful when it comes to this. Just be able to place any one of them, destroy them. And we'll kind of just start narrowing this down. I want to have good coverage on the sides of the flame altar there. And this is what we'll use the majority of the terrain blocks there, is uh, sort of shaping the branch. But this is how we'll do it. We'll just kind of start wide at the top, begin tapering toward the bottom, getting a little thicker as it comes in to meet the, uh, the trunk of the tree there. So, here we go, something like this, and come down with that, make that a little thicker there, maybe sort of blend some of this in here, one right there, let's see, one right there, and just start tying it in to the trunk of the tree there as we taper out toward the end of the branch. And this will sort of round it out and just start making things look a lot more natural. And as we continue and get farther along, we can keep switching to a slightly smaller blueprints. I'm using this box one now, just to keep sort of refining the look here and rounding out this branch, blending everything. And you can kind of keep switching. And then we even have the super small ones. We have the little tiny cube up here and then the single terrain block where at the very end, uh, we'll go ahead and use it to sort of just continue blending things, but it uses a lot of resources, so we'll try to hold off on it for a while. Keep just destroying our little scaffolding pieces as we work our way down. And let's keep doing this. We'll keep kind of filling it out, doing some detail, repeating the same thing on the other side. Periodically, we can keep stepping back and taking a look at it from farther away. And I'll get back with you guys in a bit when I'm a little more happy with it. All right, here we go. This is starting to look much nicer. You can see it's tapered nicely into the tree there, and I've been blending it quite a bit. I've used about 500 of the bark up to this point, for those of you who are curious. Um, begun rounding it out there, and it sort of slanted it up and off in that direction there to taper in on the end. So I think it's looking quite natural, tying into the tree nicely. And I think that's where I'll leave off for today's video. So I hope you all enjoyed. I know it was a bit slower paced with a lot of planning, but I felt it was necessary to sort of explain the project. And I know some of you like seeing sort of the behind the scenes and all the planning process. So with that said, this lays out a beautiful foundation to continue the project. So definitely stay tuned for more videos and live streams. And with that, huge shout out to all of my channel members. Be sure to join the Discord server through the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.